Good evening, guys. So tonight we're interviewing one entrepreneur called Dr. Mani Pavitra. She's the CEO for Pampered Moms and Million Moms. She came all the way from India to Singapore for a conference, so we caught up with her to have a video interview. I will, I will, I will put a link um, to a Facebook page where, which this, uh, where you can see what she does, especially on the Million Moms Challenge. So stay tuned and enjoy. Hey guys, today I'm interviewing Dr. Mani Pavitra. She's an autodentist, a life coach, social entrepreneur, and yoga and a yoga trainer from India. She's known as the founder of Million Moms, an initiative of Puna Human Excellence Foundation that aims to empower mothers to take a healthy lifestyle through the Million Mom Challenge. Let's welcome Dr. Mani Pavitra. Dr. Mani, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for having me over here, Anna. And thank you for making time to meet me. I know you have a busy schedule flying all the way uh, here to I mean, do your business, but um, you, you, you've taken some time to I mean, share your experience with my with my audience. So thank you once again. Thank Yeah. So not to not to waste time, we would go straight into um, our discussion. I've, I've read uh, several of your posts. I've seen what you're doing with moms in India. It's really amazing. But I want to understand at what point in your life did you choose to go on the entrepreneurial journey? So um, it's never like, okay, I'm going to do this for my entire life, you know? But uh, if you sit back at home, that, okay, some perfect moment is going to come and I'm going to do that particular thing and this is my life purpose and this is my passion, it won't work out that way. Though a lot of books, a lot of uh, speakers out there say that, okay, if you, if you should come alive when you're doing whatever you're doing. But I feel uh, it doesn't work that, that way. Whatever you are good at, like for example, uh, I was an orthodontist. I was working for a dental college, uh, but then um, I decided to run my own practice. So the easiest thing was okay. I, I was educated in that, so I jumped right. into that. But that doesn't mean that is what I want to do all my life. Right. So as entrepreneurs, the most important thing is to be flexible, not to stick to one thing, and not to wait for that one thing to jump into being an entrepreneur. Just pick up whatever you are good at, and uh, when you're working on the ground with whatever. You, you are already good at. With time, things will open up. Right, right. And right. you may get into one. Like for me, it took close to um, 13 years to do what I actually love to do. Right. But all these 13 years is of no. It's not wasted. Right. You know, right. it's like every single skill that I was picking up all these years for this moment in time. Well, I really like what she said. She mentioned that. For 13 years, she was just building up skill, and she didn't sit down to say, "I want the perfect moment to start being an entrepreneur." She picked up all the knowledge she's had so far and used it to build a business, which is amazing. And I know the entrepreneur journey is not easy. So, what motivates you to still, um, I mean, give to your, your 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 business? And and please share a bit also about the Million Moms Challenge. It's very interesting. Yeah, so uh, like I said, um, it's, we need to identify something which is really good. But again, in that process, you should not sit back. Right. Like in my dental thing, I realized I love seeing people smile. So I was like, okay, I'm building smiles. Right. But uh, the moment I became a mother uh, and I first gave birth to my first child, that was a moment of immense power for me. Like as a girl, uh, you know, I never experienced that kind of power. The moment of birth of my child, it was like brilliant. Wow. So something woke up within me, you know, even my voice opened up. Something very phenomenal happened. So I wanted people to experience that power which I had in my birth. So I, I used to go and talk about it for free. For more than a year or two, I was just talking, 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 talking. And then I realized every time I go there to talk, over just over the weekend, that's giving me energy to last the whole week. So my dental practice was giving me money, but it was not giving me that kind of joy and power and you know, you kind of wake up right. to a certain thing. And I was like, okay, I'm going there t talking to these moms and it's giving me the power to last the whole week. Then I'm like, okay, this is good. Let me do it a little more. Right. So I set up something called the Pampered Moms, where, which was an independent center which was catering to only mothers during pregnancy phase. But like, like you know, how many people would be pregnant in an entire population? Right. Not many, right? So it is not a successful business. 
But that gave me the exposure. As as owner of Papad Moms, I went to multiple hospitals in the city of Hyderabad. And at one point of time, I was teaching at all the top corporates. The kind of money that was coming in, it was peanuts compared to what I was making my, in my dental. But the kind of energy which was coming in, it was more than enough to last me my right, entire right. This thing. So uh, then I was doing Papad Moms, and then uh, I got an offer to partner with one of the top hospitals in natural birthing. So I got my partnership, and I was. Uh, supposed not to do pampered moms anymore in the agreement. Okay. So I closed it down and I was uh, I was a partner in this hospital. Wow. So um, when I'm coming to this hospital, I'm doing I'm loving what I'm doing. But again, after the two years, it is like I'm just doing the same thing. I want to reach out to a lot more people, and I'm like, okay, what is a lot more people? Mm. And I'm like, okay, fine, let me reach out to a million mothers. Wow. And I thought it's going to take my whole lifetime. But the power with which I started off million moms. Maybe it was my EBI moment where, um, where what I loved to do, uh, like every moment I was breathing in what exactly I wanted to do, and I was just giving again. Right. Mom, this is a social initiative. It was completely done. Uh, it's free of cost. Right. But then, um, then I could actually identify the actual problem of mothers, why they are suffering, what is happening. There's a lot of feedback, and we reached out to more than 2.8 million mothers. 2.8 million. So yeah. if this was in a space of how long? So, uh, like I said, when when you are actually in that zone, the universe conspires and takes you. Like it becomes viral. So uh, it, it's not even two years. Two point eight yeah. million moms in less than two years. That is amazing. You know, when she was sharing, um, I hope we can even amplify our voice a bit for our audience. Something struck me through all the points you raised. Given. So. One thing I'm learning is that giving fuels her, 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 her motivation for doing um, this thing. Now, another thing I want to ask is that, as an, as an entrepreneur, what should be the mindset? What is that mindset that um, every successful entrepreneur should have? Maybe we can amplify our voice a bit. Yeah, so I think uh, as an entrepreneur, the most important thing is uh, uh, doing the most boring thing. A lot of people say, uh, you know, uh, you should you know, you should give you energy and all of that. But uh, if you have to be a successful as an entrepreneur, you if you persist to do the most boring thing also, uh, that is what will actually give you that killer result. Right. Yeah. Yes, there is passion. Yes, there is something that you should love. But the consistency. Mm. Every day you wake up and you you have to look at your number of sales that's happening. Even though it's free. Like in my case, I'm doing it for free. Right. right? But every day, okay, what is the number of mothers which are coming in? How am I able to serve them? Okay, numbers are very, 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 very important as an entrepreneur. Otherwise, you become someone without. Uh, though for me, it is not money payback, but it is the kind of impact. Right. You know, you right. can become a very impactful right. uh, person also. But if you become very lax, okay, I'm doing this. There is no measure to mm. what you're doing. Mm. That's when you you actually fall for lag on wow. your face. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So, so, so viewers, you, you need to understand this. There's a difference between being successful. And being impactful. From what she's saying, I understand that you can be successful having money. I mean, this amount of money you for you would be an for be for you would be a success. But impact is reaching so many lives and touching them. That brings true success with satisfaction. So know that success with satisfaction. Now there's this third question. I know she she really has to go someplace. That I want to I want to I want to ask her. It's a tricky question. So if you lose everything, if you lose everything, let's say tomorrow morning you got a million months is no more, pumped mom, whatever you have is no more, and you have 90 days, what will you do to save yourself? So uh, there's nothing to save myself from because the kind of network that I have built, like right now I'm in Singapore, there's right. a mother in Singapore who's come and met me. Uh, the other week I went to a remote village, there was a mother who came and she recognized me. I went to a seminar, there's a mother who came. So the impact is immense. Wow. It, 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 I have myself with me. All that it takes is, uh, not even 90 days is, is too big. Right. I think it just takes a day or two for me to decide what I have to do and just go home. See, so, 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 so you, 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 do you see what she's sharing? When you go on the entrepreneur journey and you're impacting lives, even when you fail at a certain point, you can pick yourself up and start. She's built an enormous network. A lot of people that she's never met 
recognize her. I'm sure when she flew into Singapore, somebody was like, hey, money, but she's like, I don't even know you. But because what she's doing is so impactful, she can start anywhere, even when this whole thing, I mean, goes off. So, so, so I mean, tonight we want to encourage every young person out there who is um, thinking of the perfect time to go on the entrepreneur journey. Learn from Dr. Mani's sharing. Um, to wrap it up, I want her to give her final words. I mean, to to something that would inspire you know uh, the people out there. I know a lot of people are going to see. Millions of people are going to watch this. I want you to summarize and share something that would you know cause people to to to, to action. Uh, so the most important thing that you guys need to do is take action. Be a massive action taker. You know. When you're taking action, don't wait for that perfect moment or don't wait for someone to come and help you. Just whatever you know, take a step, take a step, take a step. And those steps will lead you to one beautiful place which is uniquely yours. And you become someone who is irreplaceable. You will become that go-to person for every person out there. But the difference is uh, stop thinking, start acting. Stop thinking too much, start acting. Dr. Mani, thank you for your time. My pleasure. Thank you so much. It's totally pleasure talking. <laughs> thank you, thank you. All right, viewers, so I also hope you've learned something and um, you would take an action. You need to stop thinking too much and take action. You enjoy this session of the interview. So I would like a favor from you. If you like what you saw and you want more videos, please subscribe to my channel. I also want to ask, if you have anybody in mind who's an entrepreneur in Singapore that you want me to interview, do let me know. I'll get them for you.